Now, in that period of the 80s, there was a there was a war, very heavy war in El Salvador, and there was uh, there was also a conflict in in Nicaragua. And the situation was is that the uh, Bill had covered this. Have you showed him any of your Nicaragua work yet? Yeah. You have, okay. So he had actually covered the insurrection uh, where the Sandinistas overthrew, uh, uh, kicked out President Anastasio Somoza, and they instituted a revolutionary process. And, but over a period of years, the United States was funding a group called the Contras, which was trying to overthrow the government of, of Nicaragua. So there was a very uh, heavy, kind of a heavy war. It had a heavy impact, especially on the civilian population. It was a guerrilla war on the, on the side of the Contras, which is this group that was supported by the U.S. But, you know, most of their activity was, a, was not against the, the Nicaraguan army, the Sandinista army, but it was, a lot of it was against civilians. So I went down. Um, I originally was going to go down for three weeks. I had some some stories to cover for some publications in San Francisco. And uh, I ended up staying five weeks. Uh, I met, that's where I met Bill. And uh, Bill at that time was working as, uh, for both uh, Newsweek and, uh, and Reuters. Um, but I kind of backed him up when I went down. It was actually the inauguration that there had been elections and Daniel Ortega had been elected president. So I covered the inaugurations inauguration of Ortega. Um, I was going to stay three weeks. I stayed five. I came back to the U.S. for about four weeks and I moved down and I ended up being down there for almost six years. So I was just captivated by, by this story. It was also, a, it was both the story that needed to be told and it was also a big opportunity for me um, because Bill ended up with a staff job at Newsweek and so he had to cut his ties totally with Reuters and I ended up with a staff job with Reuters. So uh, it was a combination of a story that I wanted to help tell and um, you know a professional opportunity. So I'm going to show, uh, the first things I'm going to show you are some photos from Nicaragua. Nicaragua was a very poor country and one of the things that had happened in 1972, with that, which actually had a, a big influence, I think, on the, the, the revolution in 79, or the insurrection and overthrow in 79, was the earthquake. There had been an earthquake that had devastated the capital. Now, this particular photo, uh, it's the, it was the old cathedral in Managua that had been damaged in the earthquake. These guys were using it as an indoor stadium, playing a little baseball. So this was also a big uh, financial story, and there was a, the United States put a trade embargo on Nicaragua, so it made it very difficult. That added with the war, made a very difficult economic situation. So there was a lot of shortages in the, in the society. And that's what this was. This is for a story on the economic situation. This is a situation where I didn't quite just happen on this photo. I saw, I saw these elements. Even though it's a news shot, you know, I saw this as a, as a great artistic, a great compositional, you know, vehicle. But it's a story about how it's affecting the people. So just a photograph of these shelves, I mean, really didn't mean much. So I planted myself here and I waited till somebody came around and, and came towards me and I made, and I made the shot. So you should, al you should always be thinking, you always be thinking, you know, and things aren't always going to happen just right in front of you. You know, sometimes you have to help give them a little, uh, give it a little help. But the real story in Nicaragua, the, the overriding story, was the war and the effect that it was having on, on, on everybody, but, uh, but primarily on the civilian population. But this was uh, a truck that had been carrying people, a big truck that had been carrying people to this, this village, San Jose de Bocay, and it, it had also been carrying fuel, it had been carrying gasoline to the town, and it hit a Contra landmine and blew up, and 33 out of the 34 people that were riding in the truck were killed, including, uh, you can see, a, you know, a small child. 
Now this was a photo that I had actually had been haunting me in my head for a long time. And this was a contra-attack on an agricultural co-op and this, this, is, this young child, six months old, was killed and that's his, that's his two and a half year old sister. And so to me it just expresses, you know, the, the income comprehensible incomprehensibility of, of war. I mean, she doesn't know. I mean, I'm sure she's seen her, her brother, you know, sleeping in his crib, and now there he is, but, you know, something's different. Sometimes the only way to get some places was, was uh, riding with the Army, with the Sandinista military. Or in Bill's case, he actually came in one time with the Contra rebels. So there were some cases where you had to travel with the military on both sides. So this is just, these are these Russian-made helicopters that were, they were the main transport vehicles in the, in the countryside. The way I used to work is I had two cameras. I had one with a, with a 24 millimeter wide angle lens, and I had another one with a 7200 zoom. And basically those were the two cameras. I had some other lenses, I very rarely used them, but those were the two that I traveled with all the time. you see some very, very difficult stuff when you're covering war. These are, these are four dead Contras in the road and behind them the Jeep is our Sandinistas. These are captured Contra. We don't see the Sandinistas, they're outside of the frame, but these guys are Contras that were captured by the Sandinistas and these are their brothers in arms that had been killed. And this kid, I mean, on the right, I saw him later at a sort of like a press conference. He, he was, you know, he was probably 13 years old, and very young. It was dangerous for us as well because there were a lot of these uh, ambushes and landmines. And so we had, to, we had to drive our, you know, our four-wheel drives around these same roads. So we never knew. Uh, we were always, I was always worried, you know, we may hit a landmine or the Contras may ambush us and, th you know, think we're, well, or maybe not be thinking. Uh, I don't know if you ever knew this, Bill, but these, I actually was, was captured by the Contra rebels on the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. And these are the guys that captured me. After they held me all day and they, and they let us go, they, they let me take this picture of them. Uh, but we were there covering the Mosquito Indians being allowed to move back to their, to their villages. They had been rounded up earlier and they had been living in resettlement camps. And they came to an agreement with the government and they allowed them to go back. And so we went, we covered this movement back to the villages and we went to this one village and unbeknownst to us there were Contra rebels right nearby. And I would, this is an interesting story about journalists and cameramen. They were asking, one of the questions they were asking was, have you, are there any of, you know, the, the company, you know, any of the Contra people, are they around, you know? And the, and the villagers were going, oh, no, no, we haven't seen them. But in fact, they were down by the river, out of sight. And somebody from the village went down and said, we don't know who these people are, but they're asking about you guys. <laughs> and so, oh, great. So then they surrounded the village, and they came in from all sides. And we were just getting ready to leave, and I was getting in the, in the truck to leave, and I told Tamayo, I said, hey, Juan, I think we're, gonna, I think we're about to be captured. And this guy was running down the road with this, it's, I think it's an M79, but anyway, it breaks like a shotgun and you put a shell in it and this guy's like, and these guys have been out in the bush and that, and they've been smoking some weed or stuff, I don't know, man, they were, they were pretty, they were pretty out there. But anyway, it's a very scary situation, they had us down on the, down on the ground, they had their guns to the back of our heads, and uh, they were much more hyper than we were, they didn't expect to find us there, this was very unusual. We were actually pretty calm, but, but I can remember they were really hyped up. I was more afraid. I, was a, I, I thought they were going to shoot us, and I thought that it might even happen because they were just so nervous. It might happen accidentally and shoot one of us, and then they'd have to shoot the other two. But we spent many hours with them. We finally convinced them that uh, we were journalists. I think finally what did it, we said, you know, it really wouldn't be too good for you guys if you killed us. And I think they finally, uh, we finally got through to them.
and they let us go. But that's, that was my, my most, that was my scariest experience.